Hey, howdy, y'all, man. This is Wolfen4966. I'm John. I'm your host. Um, I'm coming to you. I Lately, I've been doing one a day, but I was outside, uh, enjoying the outside, of course. It's a little hot out there. But uh, now that I'm bald, it's not so uncomfy. <laughs> but anyways, my thought was, is I was thinking about the 90 and the 10 percentile, you know, of the American population. And w what, what I want to get through is I was thinking, of, I was reflecting on uh, my past military service. You know what? If your son or daughter are in the military, you need to eat it up your game man you need up your game on your thought uh, your thought uh, they're doing something that's out of the ordinary that's not not even a 10 percent only 10 not even 10 percent people probably about six percent of the population serves in the military and is active right now and they're protecting your rights you're saying my son and daughter, they're, you know, I, I didn't expect nothing of them, and they're in the military. You know what? You should be proud. You should be proud of your child. Because, you know what? They, they had the intestinal fortitude, the guts, the balls to go into the military. Yeah, I hope I don't. That's involuntary. Anyways. It's a, I choose to serve military now. There is no draft. There is no, none of that crap. If your child joins the military, you should have a high regard for them. If you don't see your, your if you don't see the difference in your child after they pass basic and AIT, I don't know what to say about you, man. I, I've been through it. I've been through it. It takes one hell of an intestinal fortitude to be able to aim a high caliber rifle at another person that you know is going to try to kill you too. So it's like a kill you before you kill me basis. <clears throat> and I'm fighting on the pretense of it, it, it could be a lie. Or it could be the truth. Your country's telling you. But you know, you've got a duty, you got a duty to protect and preserve the freedom of the nation. And you know, the only symbol you have to back that up is that flag. Our flag, the American flag. That flag's been through hell, folks. I mean, just think about the past hundred years, you know. World War One, World War Two, Korea, Vietnam, Kuwait, Saudi. Think about Iraq and Afghanistan. We lost a lot of boys and girls, man. I'm telling you what. You know, and uh, women weren't allowed in the game until, you know, they needed nurses in Korea, and then. In Vietnam, they had uh, they had women too, but the the modern soldier is is so mixed. There is not one race that's not involved. There is not one gender that's not involved. Hell, you know. If you think uh, if you if you're sitting back, you're kicking back like this, and enjoying your beer or whatever it is. I bet you want 10 to 1 you're not thinking about how you were able to do that without being arrested. You know, and it, it, it's getting that way. It's getting to where we, we need to protect those rights. You have the right to say whatever you want. I tell you what, go to China. Go to China. Go to North, North Korea. North Korea is a big one, man. I dare you to go there in the courtyard and say, 
I hate the government and the dictator involved is suck can suck my balls. And I, I guarantee you're not going to live not even one minute after that. Because someone's going to take you out. You know why? Because you don't have no rights there, man. Hell, man, they control the media. Oh, what I'm doing right now, I can't do. I, I can't do in North Korea. I can't do this in North Korea. I wouldn't uh, wouldn't be able to walk out my door without being arrested for conspiracy. You know? So, 90% of you, what, what I'm getting to is 90% of you are sitting out there going, wow, man, I'm just worried about the bills. I'm just worried about this. And it's like, Bill's my ass, man. You, you got a child in the military? You do what you can. You do what you can to make them proud of what they did. And, I mean, my, 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 my father was ex-military, and he understood it more than anybody. When I graduated from basic, my dad and my stepmom was there. My mother had died, so uh, she wasn't there. But, well... She wasn't able to get there. But my dad was there. My dad was there, and I was so proud. Man, I'll tell you what, man. There ain't nothing like graduating basic training and having your parents there, man. You know, you just, uh, you feel awkward. You feel dorky because, you know, you got all your hair shaved off. Well, I got it now. now. But, um. My dad always told me, he goes, son, it'll grow back, man. It'll grow back. And I said, Dad, I ain't going to be able to wear it like I used to. He goes, well, there ain't no problem in that. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you a better man. It's going to make you a better man. What if I go to war? He goes, um, there's a good chance that's going to happen, and it'll make you a better man. It made me... A better man but it also made me a different man it takes a lot of intestinal fortitude to raise up that high caliber rifle and kill the man that's about to kill you it's just I just can't explain it to you but I tell you what they're throwing everything at you man they're throwing everything at you man and it's true. It comes down to one thing. You're not there mainly just for your country. If, if that was it, I mean, you would be like, you know, you'd be so disappointed in what you did. But, folks, I was there for my, my brothers and sisters in arms, man. I was, there to, I was there to help them get out of this. I didn't, I didn't expect to get out of it myself. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, you're not going to get out of it alive or you're not going to get out of it in one piece. I was the one that got out of it without being in one piece, you know, but you never get out of it in one piece. You leave something there. You leave something there, you know. You're a human being and you got to take out another human being. You're not the same. You, you're never going to be the same. Everybody said, did he kill somebody? I don't want that fucking question. Excuse my language. You know what? Stop asking soldiers if they killed somebody, man. Because we prefer not to tell you. We prefer not to tell you. But I guarantee you. Every American soldier out there has aimed their weapon at somebody as if they were going to kill them. And they fired. They fired their weapon. And uh, that the, uh, the enemy soldier went down. You don't know half the time if it was you or the other six people that were aiming at the same some bitch, you know. It's just the way it is.